come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. And you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you, who are into the same stuff that we're into, even when we go way off the rails. Even when we go to different worlds. Depths. <laughs> Of direct hell. to video. Yeah. Does it, what does that even mean anymore? I suppose I should enter. We should introduce ourselves. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. That Holly means, is on assignment. She's in a today. different Fortunately. Dimension. Yeah. You are. Okay, we'll get to it. Direct to video. Direct to video. Used to mean, because it means something different now, mm. right? Yes. It means just direct to streaming. Yeah, it just VOD. means. It just means people won't go to the theater anymore, is all it means now. Yeah, but yeah. now it's like movies, you know, like you got Netflix and Hulu and all mm-hmm. these guys making their own movies. Are they direct-to-video movies? Not. Some are. It still happens. So, yeah. This is like when um, when Netflix buys a movie that, oh, I, I forgot what they've done recently, where it's just like, ah, eh, it's not going to go to theater, we'll sell it to Netflix, and that is now a direct-to-streaming property. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot. Like the new Predator movie. Direct to Hulu. Is, is it? Is it? Yeah. Now, wow. that's what I want. Is that because they think it won't do well in theaters? See, that's what I want to know. Yeah, right. I mean, because that's what I assume when we're talking about direct-to-video movie, it was a movie that wasn't good enough for theaters, yeah. but there right. was a cash revenue and video stores. Right. There's right. money to be made, but we have to put it out, I guess, the cheapest way possible. Theater would not be well would not be a boon for them if they went to the theater instead of like going to something like hulu or something like yeah, that because i wonder what the cost is i mean i have no idea of like you know i mean obviously you know re- you replicate movies on tape versus having to have film prints back in 2005 right. or whatever and yeah. pay for a theatrical campaign and shipping and all that stuff you still have to pay for shipping for the cassettes i don't know whatever <laughs> what are we talking about here tonight who oh, we watch a movie that's chosen by michaela what do we watch tonight? What world did you take us to? We watched Hellraiser, Hellworld. Okay, what Hellraiser is this? What number? The eighth. Eighth. Out of? Uh, at least nine, I think. There are ten. Ten, okay. If ten. anyone mentions or has a problem with me bringing a sequel ever again, I'm pointing <laughs> to this and be like, this is where we, this is where we went. This is but, not the this is not the only bad sequel we've ever watched I know, on this I'm show. I'm just saying. I, I I like that it's just that it's number eight. Sean, that I, I so never deep down the I thing. never claimed this movie was good. Oh no, we know. We're not, uh, we're not I, here. I had not even seen it, so <laughs> you, I don't think you any of us picked had. it yeah. sight unseen. Yes. Yeah, why none of us. You, why did had you pick it, it Michaela? Um, what brought this to your attention? Three things. Three things. Henry Cavill. Oh, the star. Hellraiser video game. Sort of. <laughs> Do you watch the trailers? You read the description. They lead you to believe this I is know, a video game which movie. Which is very disappointing. Uh, Doug Bradley's last performance is Pinhead. Okay, there we go. Is that and Lance enough? Henriksen. And La- Lance Henriksen, yeah. Yeah. Was that your La- poll for this movie, Lance yeah. Henriksen? La- what year was this made? 2005. And who directed it? Rick Boda, who you would know from Hellraiser Debtor and Hellraiser Hellseeker. Oh, no. But, oh, wow. but, so but, he- but this guy is... A Saturday Night Freak Show All Star because <laughs> as a cinematographer, he has, okay. he has done Valentine, House on Haunted Hill, The Glimmer Man, Barbed Wire, and the TV series Werewolf from the '90s. Colin, oh wow, Barbed Wire. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for Barbed Wire if it hasn't already been I done. Barbed Wire yeah. in yeah. forever. But huh. Sean, Sean, I'd like to pick point out that a couple of those were picks you brought. Which ones? The Glimmer Man, Valentine, House I didn't on bring Haunted Glimmer. Hill, Valentine. Yes. You uh, did he, bring the Glimmer Man. No. No, do we do you Glimmer Man? We haven't done Glimmer Man. I thought Man. we did. He brought House on Haunted Hill. Yeah. I brought one of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, we've all we all we all get there. <laughs> we all bring some trash. Yeah. Especially it, in the direct to video department. I did see the um story by credit was Joel Sowison, who of course brought us the immortal classic uh, trick or treat. Yep. <laughs> okay. So uh, well he this I was, think well, this Where's was the bell? <laughs> Somebody ding the bell. Where's the trick or treat? Ding. All right. That's gonna go on wrong. like one of them Facebook things when it's like the which bingo. movie yeah has been m- mentioned most on <laughs> yeah. Saturday Night Freak Good Show. Trivet, yeah. The, he he wrote a short story novel or whatever that, that that this was adapted from. 
And when I say adapted from, I mean they were going to make it a completely different movie and they decided to shove Hellraiser into it. Okay, but that Which... is the MO for yes. these movies. That's this okay. franchise. That's yes. what this franchise like, always does. We have a script. Let's massage it a little bit and yeah. make it a Hellraiser so movie. So what the hell do you know what was going on over it? So this is Dimension Films mm-hmm. run by Harvey's brother, Bob Weinstein, mm-hmm. right? It was like the genre spinoff of Miramax Films. Mm-hmm. And they did have a lot of stuff that went to the theater and struck, you know, gold. The Crow, I think, you know, obviously that was a big one. Uh, they had Scream. They mm-hmm. had, they bought the rights to the Halloween franchise. They mm-hmm. had Wes Craven, you know, mm-hmm. basically he worked for them. Um, and they had Hellraiser, I think, starting with Hellraiser 3. Yeah. I want to mm-hmm. say maybe it was maybe. their first one. If I'm, It was either three or four, right? They took right. over the series. And then they had Children of the Corn. Uh, the, well, not so not the first one. They had, I think, two and three. Some of these were theatrical, right? Mm-hmm. But they seem to capitalize on this market that exists. Is this exclusively like horror film fans that just will? I mean, that's the thing. They're taking advantage of us, right? Well, well, yeah. But <laughs> I don't see rom com fans going out. Well, to, I, as for, I was like, saying it, I saw like, how many bring it ons are there. Oh, there's oh, a lot now. There's like eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. So no, there's a lot of those now. <laughs> there was one that just came out like last year, Colin, a yeah, Halloween yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. They all have different hashtags on the end yeah. of them now. Okay. Yeah. That's how you different yeah. those National Lampoon. Oh, like, there's a bajillion of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even the American Pie ones, they kept oh, going. They're for a long still going time. with yeah. those. The Naked Mile. Okay, so it's not just mm-hmm. us. Then. No, I it's guess not. That's right. Like they just find like an audience and exploit it. Yeah. Because I'm like, does Bob Weinstein even know what the fuck Hellraiser is or anything about it, or does he just sign? I don't think he cares. It's a property with an uh, icon Mm -hmm. in it, an iconic uh, character Mm -hmm. that they have the rights to. Yes. But the contract, it sounds like, is basically like, uh, you know, you have this for five years, and if you haven't made with an option, right? Mm -hmm. And so within five years, you got to make another one. Otherwise, your option expires. And so to keep it going, they don't care no, no, what this, it is. This was shot back to back with Hellraiser Debtor. Yeah. In like Romania. they were shot at the same time. Yeah. In, in Romania. Yes. In Romania, which I guess has amazing tax credits because a ton of cheap movies shoot there. Wasn't the um, the new Texas Chainsaw movie that came out this year shot there? Ooh, I th- probably. I'm pretty sure I, I remember like hearing it was. that. But because it was shot in Romania... <laughs> That's uh, why we got Lance Hendrickson and one other yeah, actor. Yeah, this, this, this is how you get the cast. Because they were already in Romania making another movie. Which movie? <laughs> Didn't specify. Oh, IMDb uh, did not say. Oh, I know what it is. Um, the the British um, woman in this, who's one of the characters, she was also cast because they were all just wandering around Romania. Mm-hmm. She was shooting Dracula Two: The Ascension, mm-hmm. Patrick also Lussier's movie. A mm-hmm. dimension. Yeah, yep. that was yep. their director. Video. And Lance Hendrickson was shooting Mimic Three. Also, oh, wow. a dimension. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So, so dimension like, just hey, operates out of Romania, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, hey, you're here. We're yeah. We're shooting Cast a movie. them in this. Romania. Yeah. So how much? What like? What's it worth to Lance Henriksen? How much do you think he got paid? I uh, hope a lot. What was the budget? I can't find a budget anywhere online yeah, for this I movie. Yeah, I can't find it. Colin, believe it or not, there's not a lot of information about this movie uh, online. This is, I'm going to go with $300,000. It's got to be. <laughs> there's one location, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. I'm going to say, yeah, probably in the hundreds of thousands at yeah. a certain level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No higher than three hundred, I wouldn't think. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Lance Henderson get like ten grand. Oh, I think probably like 50, 20 grand? 50, 50 to 100, 50? maybe. Yeah? I yeah. think so. Yeah. He's still Lance. I mean, he's the... Aside from Doug Bradley and Pinhead, yeah, like but yeah. the other thing on this, this movie, you're like, I mean, the negotiation has to be like, yeah, you know, Pinhead's the guy you got to actually <laughs> right. get in the movie, and so, he, but how many scenes you can put him in mm. brings him. He's like fifty thousand dollars for like three scenes, <laughs> right? <You> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And um, maybe you get one or two more Cenobites. I don't know. We'll okay. see if what not costume, the not the A team Cenobites. No. So you're we'll gonna get the B team Cenobites. Yeah, in the closet to bring out the Chatterer and a. Uh, uh, one like I, one that has like blindfolds on. A blindfold I, over I'm not his familiar. Eyes and mouth. I don't know I, if no, I've seen him before. I'm not a Hellraiser person. I don't know the, these characters very well. I know the, the CD guy and the chatterer. But I know I that I know when we're missing some. If that makes sense. Like yeah. I like I know Butterball's not yep. in this. Uh, Butterball. And the female one played by yeah. Barbie Wilde. I don't mm-hmm. know what it's her name is, but that but is also like not the in female this. Female Cenobite. Yeah. But they were like the classic ones. So right. Um, I guess I think I saw the first four of these. Um, the first two I saw, you know, obviously on video or whatever after, but I saw three and four in the theater. Mm. And then I think I saw five because that had Craig Sheffer from Nightbreed in it. What was the names of these? That was uh, Inferno. Any, any, oh, sorry. It was uh, Hellraiser, Hellbound, uh, Hell on Earth, um, 
What's the fourth one called? It's escaping uh, me right now. Uh, and then I don't know. Uh, it was the one that it was like an anthology hmm. that <sighs> took place. It was one family <laughs> related to the uh, L- Lament configuration. The Lamont. So you actually get to see that's the one Adam Scott's in. Oh, is it okay? Uh, okay, and you get to yeah, see how it's, it's like built. a peer. He's in like he's like a French yeah. in a wig, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you get to see <laughs> like how he's like the, in a powdered wig. Uh, yeah, I watch yeah. that movie. <laughs> I know, that's and funny. it ends in space. Uh, okay. Right. The yeah, there's one that ends in space. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I like the idea. Bloodlines. There you go. Blood, Bloodlines. Yes. Oh, I like the idea the of a Hellraiser anthology, though. I feel like that makes way more sense as a movie. So to does do yeah. an anthology. Just make his way through each story, or does who? Does Pinhead just make his way through each story in this? That's anthology? what it should be. I don't even think that he's in the Shocker. first story, or maybe even he might be in the second one. And like the last one is a space station that's been built to basically trap the the demons. Uh, All right, uh, that's like the whole. I'm listening. Um, oh, but Flourish. there is a comic yeah. series, or there was at one point a Hellraiser comic series, and I don't remember if Clive Barker actually wrote for any of them mm-hmm. or anything. But um, it was kind of an anthology. But there was like really no Pinhead in a lot of them. Like. Like every once in a while he'd show up but this is kind of the problem i mean like okay you say you're not very familiar with the hellraiser series nope. i say here's a movie and it's called hellraiser and you've seen the first one mm-hmm. so like what are your expectations what ne- what needs to be in a movie for it to be called hellraiser lots Pain. of body horror Pain. like adult themes and sex and lots of like religious iconography and monologuing i expect people to get ripped apart by chains yeah, it's got to be really so it's gory. Be gore, yeah. gore is like a yeah. hallmark. You would think so. Yeah, so usually gore Michaela and said. sex are kind of like intertwined a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah, because they okay. want the pain and pleasure yeah. part of it. Mm-hmm. That seems to be where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think this whole thing started. I mean, uh, it was the Hellbound Heart was the original story, right, mm-hmm. by Clive Barker. And then he made the movie, which I think was cheap, but somehow seems more expensive than this movie. Oh yeah, because at least they had effects work and chains flying all over the right. place. Mm-hmm. And he kind of gave it this look that I think at the time they were saying it was like a leather bar or S and M, you know, uh, fetish mm-hmm. stuff transposed onto like a classic British, uh, like well, I guess I was going to say Hellraiser, but you know, um, demonology movie sure. or whatever, right? Um, about a sexual obsession and all this other stuff. Um, that one, I mean, that kind of gets weeded out of them, it seems, as they go, where you right. have all these writers coming in and, you know, well, I guess because we were saying this wasn't even a Hellraiser project. So I always imagine that this is how this goes, right? Uh, Bob Weinstein's like, we got to we gotta make another one of these before the thing, you know, goes up. He, right. He's a, a golfer. He gambles maybe in Monte Carlo or something. He didn't care. The kids would watch all this shit. So <laughs> he hires, or they just go through a bunch of scripts they have submitted, and they're like, eh, which one can we make into a Hellraiser right. which movie? Which one's closest? <laughs> like, a little bit of tweaking, we can make that into a Hellraiser movie. So they hire, probably, some kid out of a film school or college who just wrote something and submitted it and they're like hire this guy he's cheap <laughs> right he's got no experience <laughs> he'll do what get we tell him to do right, right? Yeah. and then they're like get rick rick's uh, rick's been good for us he, mm-hmm. he can work fast he works cheap get rick to come in and shoot it mm-hmm. we'll crank it out in two weeks and have it on the shelves in week three mm-hmm. and bam these kids will eat it up mm-hmm. yep and we'll keep our copyright yeah this is definitely something that's in that like, that walmart five dollar bin right there's probably like hundreds of copies of this in there well now the you DVD get bin? the set the that has yeah. like 15 yeah, right, all 10 right. hellraiser right, well, no, they, they don't have the first two right because those are like oh, the, holy the good Grail. ones yeah. yeah 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 the good ones we don't put the good ones in the pack <laughs> No, Child's Play wasn't in that pack, aside from rights issues. Child's right. Play wasn't in that pack for a long time. <laughs> Oof. Okay. <laughs> so now we know how uh, Hellraiser Hellworld came to be. <laughs> so this one, I guess, uh, calls itself Hellworld. Mm-hmm. So we're expecting some variation of uh, now we're actually going to hell. Maybe it's going to take place in hell because the other movies, uh, Hellraiser 2 actually did for a portion of it. You get to see hell. Mm-hmm. Um what is Hell World in this movie, though? Uh, online video game. That we never see. Sean, you saw them <laughs> click on the box until it opens. Uh, okay, but the, this tech, is, the internet of 2005. This is a big uh, like sticking point with this movie because, big, as yeah. Mikhail is saying, the description of this movie uh, will lead you to believe that there's a lot of video gaming involved here, but there isn't. It leads you to all. believe it's a you die in the game, you die for real type of movie yeah and it's 
not. And I think the tagline for this movie is hell goes online yeah, or something like it that. Is. It's just mm-hmm. like ah. all lies. We're lies. telling you, lies. listener, if you're if you're intrigued by this at all, it's, it's fucking lying there, to yeah. you. We did the research for you. <laughs> Listen to right. us. Yeah, it is lies. Hell World is supposed to be this, uh, I don't even know if it's like, because I'm like, is it one of these massively I think it's like an online it's, I think it's supposed to be, yeah. It's supposed to be like World of Warcraft, but yes. Hellraiser. Okay. Yeah. That's I'm, probably again, why Henry never Campbell see jumped it. on, because he does like Because he shit. loves World of Warcraft, yeah. He does. Yeah. So it's supposed to be an online video game. Mm-hmm. That they're all like obsessed with to an obsessed. unhealthy degree. Like, Okay, but it also, it's like, the, it's it's a meta Hellraiser movie in a because way. Because they know of Hellraiser. We see characters who are wearing pinhead t-shirts. They know and masks, the, they have the masks. latex masks, they have the, merch, yeah. Right, they know the Lament or Lamont configuration. Yes, as she is totally said, said in Lamont. Movie, she calls it Lamont. Um, they know what that is, they know of Pinhead, they talk about him kind of openly, so that whole world is online now. Yeah, like, they, they know the they engineers know and the jailers right. and the, all this other stuff, uh, the Cenobites, um, so, but... They, they don't seem to be aware of like the Hellraiser movie. Is this taking place in like an alternate reality? In this movie, Hellraiser is a video game, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so all of this iconography from the movies is actually just part of this video game that they're kind of um, all obsessed with, right. addicted to. Which is easy enough for a switch over to go from like, well, the movies don't exist, but it's all a big popular video game. So, right. Pinhead. Okay. So we're treated at the beginning of this movie. Treated. Inciting incident. Watch your words, Colin. <laughs> Subjected to. There we accosted go. by. <laughs> accosted by. I like that one. Uh, we see some character that we don't know, this kid, uh, Stir of Echo style, trying yeah. to hammer through the floor of Frailty his style. Let's put it that way. It feels right, more right. like yep. frailty. Yep. With a pickaxe, right? Yeah. And uh, so my question is, uh, what was he doing? I've seen the movie. What? Nothing. He <laughs> he was digging a ditch to self-immolate in? In his basement. In concrete, I would say there might be easier ways if you're going to do that, but whatever. You're yeah, already well, trying to burn yep. yourself alive. It, one of the many logic problems with this Maybe movie. Maybe he's trying to hit a gas pipe or something yeah. and blow the whole thing up. Because and then he just quit and he's like, fuck it. I'm right, just gonna I'm just going to pull the gas, gas on myself. myself. Yeah. <laughs> Take one of these candles I've lit. Yeah. <laughs> So that uh, makes no sense. Right. At his funeral, <laughs> we meet his friends. Yes. Um, <laughs> who I guess aren't really his friends. Well, I guess they are because they all profess, I guess, through the rest of the movie. He was a great guy and all this other stuff. But there's a whole dynamic going on here, mm-hmm. um, which is just, I was going to say cliche. This is this is cliche, the movie. It yes. is. Yes. So every single character motivation, every shot is like a fucking cliche one liner every cliche one-liner. it's boilerplate mm-hmm. it's like the stuff we've heard a hundred times yep. yep if you've ever delved into i mean these kind of movies you've heard it before mm-hmm. i know it's like i guess it is kind of like a movie that writes itself because you really don't have to put a lot of work into this no. you can do it quick because no. you're just like well then this happens and then of course he goes and does this it's like, so there's a lot of, you got to be kidding me. It's like, you guys got to see this. And, you know, hello, and, is anybody there? That yeah. that literally happened. Not in this if movie. I can help it. Yep. Well, Henry Cavill Henry is Cavill. one. He's not the main <laughs> uh, guy. The, the top build person at the beginning of the movie is Lance Henderson. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, he did have a lot more screen time than uh, I thought he was going yeah. to. Yeah. We were calling, we're like, three scenes. Yeah. Three scenes is what he's going to be yep. in, and that's all. No, nope, but he's the star of the movie, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, as the main antagonist. I think everyone but, has more time than Pinhead. Yeah. Well, that, that's how these always go. Yeah. Pinhead, like, rarely Which is shows a shame, because how many hours movie. does he sit in makeup just to be on screen for I a wonder, second? You know? It's only what, head stuff now, anyway. But do they but do still, all that in, like, one day? They must. It feels all his like stuff? It, probably. Like, mm-hmm. three days. Yeah. I, just I, the amount of hours he probably has to sit in a makeup chair just to, like, so we as the audience only get a fleeting glimpse of him in one scene and then don't see him for another 30 minutes i wonder if that's why he quit i don't blame him it doesn't look fun it looks uncomfortable maybe maybe he's got the black contacts in too yeah then he can you know get paid for or want to go out and do Mm -hmm. like yeah is it worth it for him anymore Mm -hmm. or was it i mean i thought that was a big deal that like your main guy i mean i'm like what else does doug bradley have going on you know like conventions 
Yeah. Just a lot of conventions. But he, then he would turn down uh, right. playing that character for life. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. Robert Englund would still be playing Freddy Krueger, I think, if he if he had the chance. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He finds a way to put himself in the news all the time, just being like, hey, I'm still available, guys. So yeah. he totally would. Yeah. And how we haven't, it's got to be coming. There's got to be a legacy, something. For oh, yeah. Back. It's got to be coming. That and as soon as Friday the 13th court stuff is actually legitimately done and out the court, it'll, oh, it'll yeah. you just we'll be right back into it, too. Like, Teaser trailers, like he's back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's coming. It's, yeah, and people will I pay dread. off the nose for it. Mm-hmm. I dread the day because I I know I've had enough experience now. That, that it's never a good thing. Yeah, just, we just you know, we just we are people that just saw four legacy sequels in six months. Humans are not supposed to live like this, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> my brain hurts. Yeah. Well, what? Okay, so here's I guess the big problem with Hellraiser Ooh, is I'm glad you know it. Okay. <laughs> no, not not this move this move, well, this movie in general Hellraiser in, in general. Okay. Even better. All right. I'm going to say this. This might be a hot take. I mean it's Hellraiser. I don't think you're going to get judged too hard, but go yeah. for it. All right. Pinhead's not that interesting of a character. I agree, sir. I think Doug Bradley has a good voice and a good presence, but the character yet doesn't actually really do much except yeah. monologue at you. Who is Pinhead? Tell me something personal about him. That he wasn't in. Ar- wasn't <laughs> yeah, as, he was a person before, wasn't he? Like a general in an army somewhere. That, uh, see, but that was the expanded in yes. in two. They kind of gave him that that he was a human. I think in World War One, right? And opened the box, and then uh, he was taken to hell, and they turned him into Pinhead. He yes. has no memory of this, I, right. apparently. And uh, so he's this because in the first one, it's presented like he's angel to some, demons to others. He's this immortal being that's yes. existed, you know, in these Cenobites conduct people between the dimensions or whatever but it's like okay so he's basically the hell priest right Mm -hmm. yeah and priests in my experience are not too actiony mobile getting into stuff i mean even if he is a hell priest yeah Mm -hmm. right because he basically is there to spread the gospel of the god leviathan Mm -hmm. which is the actual devil which is actually like a giant uh (laughs) you know geometric configuration that spins around could you imagine <laughs> like a um jehovah's witness just get a knock on your door open up and it's pinhead trying to spread the gospel <laughs> of the lament configuration we but very nicely such, such sights to show you yeah. not today so i'm sorry it's like yeah. okay yeah. but that's basically going to be his shtick he's going to show up and say something that sounds profound mm. um i mean i like the character yeah i like him and i like the character but mm-hmm. like you said he doesn't do much I, much I think this is it. a clive barker problem because i'm thinking about rawhide rex there was a lot of priest religious preachy monologuing in that too like i understand that that's where his interests lie and what he likes to write about but for me yeah i don't find it particularly interesting well when clive barker did it he actually it seems like had you know that first one isn't about a guy named pinhead yeah. it's like pinhead is and the cenobites are secondary things in the story of frank and julia julia is actually the main uh antagonist of Mm -hmm. of both of the first first two two. movies yeah um and so i think it was just like head cenobite if i remember in the script and then he became you know this icon uh and so then it's uh, like well what personality traits do you ascribe to this thing it just shows up and basically makes pronouncements and then drags you to hell Mm -hmm. yeah that's it very calmly says Jesus wept. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's as crazy as he gets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so now it's like, it's kind of like putting, uh, well, no, I was going to say they don't even make him like the main, main character. I thought that was a problem. Pirates of the Caribbean, right? When mm-hmm. they made Jack Sparrow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, main yeah. Guy. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, knowing that pinhead really has nothing to do, although here they seem to make him a, um, slasher. Yeah, he's yeah. hacking people's heads off and stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. decapitating people with a knife. This yeah, does I, not. I haven't seen a lot of these movies. I've seen the first probably three, definitely, probably some of four. I don't remember him being like, I'm going to grab this knife and uh, stab you with it. Like, I thought he was more, right. more inventive than that. Again, I'm used to chains, ripping yeah. people apart, pain, needles, stuff right. being stretched and pulled. Like, this is more what I thought, not just whoosh, hack and slash. Because, but that- it's also a little bit saw. Like yes. and this is a post saw movie. It is a post saw movie. Notice that. But yeah, like like when the one girl I can't remember her name gets like strapped into the chair and then the device comes and like cuts the arteries in her throat. I was like, this is like the most low budget, jankiest version of a saw trap you could ever come up with. Yeah, you can see all the little pieces. Just like we're gonna pull from this movie. We're gonna pull yep. from this movie. We're gonna pull the music from all these other places, <laughs> yep. even though it's generic as shit. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to have to talk. We'll talk about the We'll music. get to the music, the music. yeah. Um, but you're reminding me, I think, when we did Phantoms, we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about the dimension uh, process. And wasn't, there's a story somewhere, I remember some filmmaker talking about wor working for Bob Weinstein, where basically, like, he'd call up in the middle of the night and be like, I just saw this movie, you know, that came out this week, and we have to compete with it, and right. so we got to do something like that. got to put something like that in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that it was Wes Craven. He was saying, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I get these calls from right. Bob Weinstein. But he did that, like, with everyone. I guess right. it yeah. was just like, hey, you're changing your movie, and we're incorporating this thing that was like, so, yeah, this Saw comes out. We got to do something in this one, like this Saw movie. Kids like Saw. Oh. All right. Okay. Sounds like the worst mm. phone calls I would ever get as a yeah. filmmaker. I know. Like, yeah. how do you fucking work under those circumstances? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing we got the movies we got. Right. Uh, so these friends. Um, so the cliche here, I guess, is going to be that they feel guilt for uh, this character, Adam. Uh, dying at the beginning of the movie. The guy who burned himself It's alive. implied he was so obsessed with the game he killed himself, right? Because they said we all played it, you know, but he just he just had more of a problem with it. There's some line like that. Yeah. And it's like, well, we could have stopped him and then they argue back and forth about like, well, no, it's fine because we all played it and the rest of us are fine. It was him. Like, there's a little bit back and forth. There's a lot of this in the movie, which is a problem considering we don't know what this game Nothing is. is it's clear. a problem for me. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. anybody else doing this movie, you can be fine with it. But they mention it so much as an obsession that to not see the game or see the obsession. Yeah. Right, or to see what problem they had with right. it or, you know, what got his, what got Adam, which I thought was the one dude's brother for the entire movie. Until right. we got the end. Yep. Like what got him so wrapped up in it that might get these guys. Like these are the natural questions I have mm -hmm. coming into this. Well, they're just, right. they're treating it like it's an addiction story, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like somehow they were all drug abusers and uh, one of the characters died, yeah, right? And so world. they're responsible because they got him into it, uh -huh. right? And yeah. so now they're feeling guilt, and that's where we're going to feed into this, uh, you know, the Hellraiser story. Mm -hmm. um, so they end up packing it in, and oh no, because uh, then, because two years after the funeral, yes. right? Um, they're still playing this this game, even though it's like it's bad for them, except for what, the main. Some main one girl. thing about the time jump. Okay, so when they're at the funeral, um, Chelsea, the main the main final final girl, I guess you want to call her that. Um, she like her hair is like zigzag parted at, and has crazy beads in it in the oh, yeah, in the in the funeral. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and I was like, that look is so dated for 2005 even. And then when they did the time <laughs> yeah. jump, when they did the time jump, I was like, oh. Because it was, I was like, it probably was 2003 when that uh, funeral yeah. happened. And then now it's 2005. I was like, damn, okay, costume department, I see you. <laughs> you did something right here. Like, so I'll uh, give them, I want to give them one little tiny bit of credit for that right. one thing. Okay. Because I was like, that's, no one was doing that in 2005. That was on its way out by 2003. So, yeah. And she when might is, be the only one who could walk away feeling good about this movie, whoever was. She's in Vikings. <laughs> she's La uh, Lagertha on that TV oh, yeah. show Vikings. Yeah. Oh, the All lead right. uh, actress. Yeah. What was her name? Chelsea. Oh, well, the character's name's Chelsea. Uh, her name is. Let me look it up. Real quick. I uh, thought it was Kathleen. Catherine. Kimmel, Catherine Winnick. Catherine Winnick. Yeah, okay. sounds familiar. People love that Viking show, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then she went. She did go on yeah. to do other things. Oh, um, so, um, the game basically, there's going to be a party held for the the game faithful. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a hell world party a rave or something. You got to solve a puzzle in order to, to go to it. They all get invitations. And so even though, you know, uh, they apparently blame themselves for Adam's death in some way that we can't quite figure out. Right. We're told you got to get over it and come out and party with us. I yeah. would say some of them blame themselves and some of them don't. Henry Cavill does not give a fuck. Henry he didn't, he didn't not, care at the, the funeral. Entire movie, yeah. Does not give yeah. A yeah. 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 He's telling other characters they need to move on constantly. So, yeah. Well, they get to this place. It's out in the middle of nowhere. It's the uh, the Leviathan, Leviathan House, mm -hmm. right? Because we're going to name drop all the mm -hmm. iconography from the Hellraiser movies. Um, and it's a big party. It looked like the Valent the party on in Valentine, the Valentine's Day pa house party that they had in Valentine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of flashing lights. We have so the music. A big spinning Lament Lamont configuration. Yes, I'm sorry. A big one. <laughs> this it's it's kind of it's like you're being it's like uh, to me it felt like a traveling. 
I don't know, a traveling museum. The like, pop up bars, like yeah, the yeah, themed like pop up thing, bars, like, yeah. And then we'll give you a tour. Yeah. Because, like, they came to, like, we'll do it in Leviathan House because right, we're in yeah. this area and <laughs> they'll teach you all about it. And they put in all their, you know, Hellraiser stuff and it turns into kind of like a big exhibit. Yeah. Which yeah. I kind of like. Yeah. Which is a good idea. Mm-hmm. But they do this. Who guides us through this exhibit? Lance, Lance. Henriksen. And who is he? The host. Okay, mm-hmm. who singles them out? This is a you know one of those things that you're like, okay, this is there a are hundreds movie. of people here. Yeah, there's hundreds, hundreds of people, but somehow he approaches these five. five? He does mention he has other guests, but yeah, yeah. He, he grabs those five. I'm and, just like, why are they so yeah, special? Uh, well, it, we'll find out later. Yeah, <laughs> and they all get to you know, so he singles them out of the party and then takes them into a private room where he gives them uh, drinks. Except there's one character who says, "I don't drink." Who but then, later? But then later tries to get a drink. Yeah. Desperately well, to, get to get a drink. drink. Yep. Um, I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. And so then he takes them on a tour of like you know the history of the house, and you know it's a cursed house, right. and he's got all these um in the basement uh medical specimens in and jars. jars. Yeah. yeah, this would be cool. So I mean the main the main setting of the movie then is the house proper, right? It's a mm-hmm. big yes. ornamental house. Lots um, of winding staircases and mm-hmm. balconies. Yeah, different and, levels that you can mm-hmm. see down through mm-hmm. and all that. Yes. There's his um, well-appointed uh, office. Yep. And there's a basement, uh, which is like the workroom slash uh, laboratory. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a laboratory. Or something. The saw room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, for all intents and purposes, it's lit like a saw it's room. Right. It feels so, like yes. a saw room. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so then the characters uh, split up to indulge themselves, and that's basically where the movie just goes like, and then this happened. Am I wrong? <laughs> there is. I don't want to say it's an important device because they, it's not. Again, but <laughs> let's just everybody watch your words. Yeah, yeah. But it is very pointed that the the thing to this party is that you pick a mask off a wall. There's all these plain white masks with four digit numbers written on them. And then you pick up the corresponding Nokia 3210 phone. And if you want to talk to another person at the party who are other hell world players, you call them on this phone using the number that's written on their mask. Why? Why not just go talk to the person that's at the party you're at? Because they're not even texting. They're calling. No, it's the anonymity of it. It's supposed to be like an anonymous sex thing, I think. Yes. But but they keep taking their fucking masks off. And their names pop up on the phone (laughs) when they call each other. It's the characters' names that come up on the phones, not the number on their mask. Fun fact about the Nokia in this movie. (laughs) Okay, it's about the Nokia. That's fine. (laughs) You can accept this. There are 92 instances of product placement for this exact phone in this movie. (laughs) Because you notice when they first put the mask on, it cuts back to the close-up on the shelf like four times. You see every character go up, a close-up of them pulling up the Nokia, Every right. character do that. Oh, and yeah, then throughout sure. the rest of the movie, there's tons of close-ups. Oh, I'm right. sure every time a phone number shows up, Nokia's yep. up in the little corner. Yep, you know? exactly. It wasn't the Motorola Razor, was that? Yeah. No, I was at, that was a phone. A, I think that came out this same year or maybe the year after. Yeah. We're, we're right we're, on the cusp. We're a year away from iPhones at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. Technically, like when years. it comes out, because it came out in 2006, this was shot in like 2003, 2004. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. Nokia's. Mm-hmm. Did Nokia mm-hmm. sponsor the movie? Get a kickback. That's the only way they got money to make this movie. Right, it's a Nokia movie. Right. The music in this movie is aggressive, um, to say the least. I say aggressive because it's, it's aggressively like, fake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like so. The impression you get while listening to it is like you hear like, "Oh, the new Creed song starting," or "This is the new <laughs> Rob Zombie song." But no, they've tricked you because what are we actually listening to? Music library. Stock music. Stock music. Yeah. Yes. yes. But stock music that is so close. To the actual music. It feels like a lawsuit. Yeah. It's like, ooh, we're getting close. Rob Zombie might have a complaint on this one. Because there's some songs that are just like, that's the song without him singing. (laughs) Yeah, they just just muted the vocal track and just played the instrumental part. It's amazing what you can get away away with with music libraries and shit. How close. I mean, I don't know if if listeners are aware that uh, this all exists, but there are music libraries where they have studio musicians who just come in and they will create a song that sounds like Creed. Like, you can actually... Like, I want to hear something that sounds like Led Zeppelin, but I don't want to pay for Led Zeppelin, but I can get that sound. Right. Get close enough for us. Yeah. yeah. I guess, like, yeah, all of us around the table right now are, like, video editors, so we've all, like, I gone see, yeah. and used these stock libraries, so I feel like we have a more sensitive ear to it than maybe some people would, because, Probably. like, we were talking about when we were watching the movie, we've all done videos at some point where you use a song, and then a couple months, years later, even, you'll hear a commercial, and you'll be like, 
I used that song five years ago when I made mm-hmm. that video for that insurance company. And yeah. then you're like, and now they're using it. Yep. I've been doing this so long. I used to go to LimeWire to get music <laughs> yeah. for commercials because yeah. they're like, we need, we need, uh, uh, scratch tracks but we want the music for it so go to limeware and get these i used to have to get music off of cds for to make commercials yeah. Yeah. i remember yeah. some of the libraries used to send oh, cds they send, and oh yeah, yeah they then, used to send shit and yeah. samples and mm-hmm. like use this and all that oh yeah mm-hmm. oh my god what an, what an era i know yep and but, yeah and nine times out of ten if you're hearing something on a commercial that sounds familiar they put zero effort in they went to audio jungle or pond five or whatever and looked at the top 10 most popular and picked one right off like, the front oh, page yeah enough. but you found out a fact about this library oh yeah it's called boss house <laughs> <laughs> a lot of boss and house in the end credits of this it movie. uh according to google it is the first uh, all vocal alt wrong alt rock song catalog serving the TV and film community in Los Angeles. So there you go. they have a uh, long history. So you pay a subscription and then you get to download like mm-hmm. you know unlimited downloads. Mm-hmm. And if you use it in the movie, you got to put like a credit or something mm-hmm. at yep. the end. Yep. And that is clearly what happened here. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. So that it adds to the the overall cheapness yes. of the of the movie. Yeah. I mean, like these the uh, you know I'm saying uh, quote unquote songs are used like. You get two or three seconds of them in a transition to right. like another scene or something. Because right, if yeah. this movie had money, it'd have the soundtrack Valentine had. It would oh, have like man. Disturbed and all that other like new metal that was on that soundtrack. Yep. So each one of these characters then uh, meets their demise, surprise, surprise, mm. with an appearance by obligatory appearance by Pinhead and uh, and gore effects courtesy of Gary Tunnencliffe. <laughs> yeah. Yikes, He's done yeah. a lot of stuff and uh, I believe MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, oh, says uh-oh. that he is on the wall, but okay. uh, I'm going to look that up. Uh, Tell us some of these amazing death scenes. What do we get? We got five characters. How do they How do they meet their ends? We've got the Saw Girl. Saw Girl who like Okay, this device. So, this like, room, first of all, I'll describe the room. Go, go into what the room is. Oh yeah, yeah. So, Sean and I immediately are <laughs> like uh, at attention when she goes into this room because it's the classic big, like high ceiling room with white sheets all over, like right. statues there's and statues mirrors and, and, and chairs and yeah. pianos, and there's the white sheets white over, sheets. and just like there's a serial killer in here somewhere. Yeah. under one of these sheets. Yeah, we've seen the others. We've seen Spookies. I've seen. I know what you did last. Yeah, summer. we know that no good is going to come of this. Yes. But she sits down in like this old timey like medical chair that has like metal cuffs that's like on their own, lock her wrists into the chair. Yes. And then this headpiece comes over. And when I say headpiece, that's like generous. It's, it's like, it's, head, it's, yeah. it's one like bar, one yeah. very thin bar with two small razors on the front of it. But it's a good two feet out from her head. Yes. She could easily, it, she has no neck strap or anything. She could easily duck under this thing. But Pinhead shows up. I would break fucking arms. To get, like, I was stuck <laughs> but you wouldn't even have to. You wouldn't even I, have I, to. You just got to duck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you just got to duck. Like, ah. Yeah. Um, because like, even if it, comes at you and it's hitting your scalp it's just gonna do give you a flesh wound you know yeah, maybe or maybe she gets her hair in there and yeah gets caught and it'll stop it right uh, who knows because they he even says like this is designed to not decapitate you so like it's it's designed to drain the body of blood in the quickest way aside from decapitation is what he says so like it's just two razors that spin it like your arteries in your throat i guess yes. yeah and she blood you don't actually like even see it go in. You just see it like no. at her face and blood is covering. And there is one shot where we saw her. It's it's too wide of a shot. It goes from about her waist to her head. And you can just see somebody from below her squirting Squirt, blood yep, up yep. on her. Like blood is coming from places that from her knees. don't make sense. Yeah. yeah, from her knees. Yeah. yeah, her knees are bleeding profusely into her face. That's yeah. what I, I noticed was like you know the effects work. They don't actually have like the impact of the saw going no. into her skin. No. They're just covering it by spraying blood all over. Them. They yes. got a yep. blood budget and they're just yep. pumping it all over right. the place. If you can't see the wound, it's fine as long as there's blood. You know right. they're dying. I think uh, the second guy he meets is well. Okay, so Lance Henriksen is involved in these deaths mm-hmm. uh, because he's in a lot of the movie. Like as we said, you know, because he seems to have singled them out, and so then I'm like, well, that means he's Pinhead somehow. And there does right. seem to be scenes where he's Lance Henriksen, and then he's Pinhead. Uh, so we're playing with the boundaries of reality because it's like, well, is Hell World a video game? Or are they actually in Hell World? Is this some kind of supernatural thing? Like, what's going on? Uh, what happens yes. to the second yes, guy? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, second guy. Is I'm trying the, to remember. The black guy. Does he get his head? Oh yeah, he gets he gets decapitated with a small knife. Oh, he gets decapitated uh, by he's, he's our um by Pinhead uh, asthma. He's got asthma. So yeah. he's got his inhaler and everything, which he drops down a grate. 
Yep. Which Classic. goes down two floors, mm-hmm. which, he, which he shoves down a grate. Let's yeah. just say that. It did not fit through those holes. Yeah. No. And he goes searching for it, which leads him back to the uh, laboratory in the basement mm-hmm. and everything. However he would find mm-hmm. it. So he hits it and then he lays down and then Pinhead is just there to cut his head off. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. That is the death scene. There right? were yep. scenes, it felt like maybe we were headed toward a Nightmare on Elm Street kind of thing, right? You give the character some kind of uh, physical weakness or Right, dependency. like the guy who had the ear of the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who had the hearing aid who got the Q tip through his head. Yeah, because right. it's like, like oh, you get it. There's like a, a little bit of a rhyme or reason right. to that. This is like the guy suffers from asthma, so he dies by getting so his I'm gonna head. I'm going to cut him in the off. throat. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like there's no associations like, oh, it's because he's, he's which got asthma. He That's worked he himself died. up more into an asthmatic state by running down two flights of stairs into this laboratory and trying to get his inhaler out than if he would just sat down and chilled out of it. Yeah, this is a man who's new to this. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's very weird. Henry yep. Cavill uh, enjoys the services of one of the patrons. Oh, yeah. He gets a blowjob when she has the mask on top of her head. So it looks like the mask <laughs> is giving him a blowjob. Which job, is, I'm like, I don't want to look at that. And it goes on for a long time. It yeah, does. I'm surprised it, it how much. unenthusiastic, like, blowjob oh, yeah. ev- that he has ever gotten. On both yeah. sides. I, yeah. It kind it's of feels so like. Just right. like. He's taking phone calls during the blowjob. Like. Right. <laughs> but I want to know. I want to catch up with this actress now. Oh, her? And be like, like what hey, what's up that? with you? What you gave that, Henry like, Cavill a fake, fake blowjob <laughs> before he was Superman. In the eighth Hellraiser like, movie. If, How do you feel about If that life? was me, I'd be going around telling everybody. <laughs> like, I'm in Hellraiser. I, with, uh, uh, I gave Henry, I gave I blew, Superman a blowjob. I blew Henry job. Cavill once. Yeah. <laughs> no known facts. There's I'd be your telling fun everybody. fact for yeah. this movie. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, uh, he He's the jock kind of overly over the top in this. He's crude. He's... He's uh, bad. He's good. I mean, I the mean, movie's it's... not helping him, but right, like, none he's... of the movie is helping him. Oof. It's the there's no characters here. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just I was looking at all these actors, just going like, "Oh, well, what do you do with it?" You know, I can right. imagine the whole you know being there with the cameras and you know uh, the coverage. I mean, I could see it all in yeah. my mind. I'm like, this is just you know they're doing whatever you can with the words that they have, mm-hmm. and some of them are just like, "How do you deliver those lines?" Oh my god, they don't sound like any <laughs> oh, human ever no. talks no. this way. Like no human people. And I think that's what kind of makes it seem like this is some guy's first script, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, we just need to get in this scene and we need to get out of this scene. And that's, that's yeah. the dialogue that'll get Well, he's there. led to the down to the basement um, by the girl mm-hmm. and then she locks him in a room. Why? Uh, because he has to die there. Yeah. Like, what is it like? Because then we don't see this character again, right? This girl? No. So, no. yeah, what what is her motivation? Why is she doing this? She's, she's some kind of, I mean, a, you could see her as a demon or something, but there's a big twist to this movie. Yep, uh, yep, okay, yeah. but let's yep. knock out these deaths. We'll get there. He, he gets, uh, uh, like, a hooked in the back. There is a setup oh, yeah, for that. Yeah, because there's, uh, um, it's called? not a Hellraiser hook. It's just a it's hook. It's just a big, like, meat hook. Yeah. No, this yeah. is Chekhov's hook, because yeah. there was, I mean, he was playing with it earlier, he was swinging it, and mm. Lance Henderson's like, you know... They used to drag bodies out of here with those things. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen to Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. Yep. Woo. And uh, then he dies on a hook. I don't know. He dies on a hook. Yep. And then you got um, the, uh, I guess he's the, well, the, um, yeah, the other main lead is this dude. Jake. Is it Jake? He's Jake. Yeah. The okay. guy I could. The mumbly guy that I can't one, understand. Yeah, the one guy I didn't want to turn into the main guy to follow around for this movie turned yeah. into the main he's guy. He's the yeah. depressed friend of Ugh. the dead guy yep. yeah yeah well, again um, thought he was his brother which would make more sense why yep. he's so depressed because i think he says like we were the only family that he had or whatever Something, and you know it's yeah. like so they had were they close i mean i have no no there's we find photos of them later on but i thought that they were brothers right yeah, um, I, I totally thought they were brothers yeah even <laughs> if they were like step brothers and he didn't know or like Jake didn't know Adam's dad mm-hmm. somehow. Yeah, right. ha, because there that's why they're not brothers, because the movie's hiding something uh, from us. Right. Um, uh. But there's a scene where uh, he is in a room full of partiers who don't seem to recognize that he's there. And then you're like, is this some Jacob's Ladder thing? And they're like, oh, they're already dead or something. Like, where are we going with this? I didn't like, I just didn't like this guy's attitude because it felt like he was just like, hello, look at me, I'm important. I'm just like, eh, I hate the character. Is this a fucking yeah. joke? Yeah. Then he it's gets like, laid like, by a right, nun. I'm leaving. It's just like, I don't think anybody cares, dude. Leave. I don't like so this guy. He, he got laid by a nun? <laughs> yep. Why? He, because. He looks up and he's like, oh, there's a nun. I should go check it out. And yeah. then he finds a naked woman. And yep. then we find out after the sex that 
She, she was, was the, the nun. nun. Yep. Yeah, there's a long protracted sex scene, which mm-hmm. you figure, I mean, this is one of those, like, it's there because it's checking off a box. Yep. yep. Unlike what the audience expects. Yep. Yeah, they even say it earlier because they think they're being clever. A, a woman walks down the stairs with her boobs out and they're just like, obligatory tit shot. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh, just, Yep. Uh. Yep. They're trying to be metal, like, scream, and smart. it's really not working. Really trying. There's a lot of that stuff, you know, but I mean, I, I see that a lot when you get to this, you know, level of, uh, a horror movie they the, like even all the in jokes are mm-hmm. like about other horror movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that it's very insular kind of yeah um and so chelsea ends up determining that it's a house the house is fucking with us right because she's <laughs> this is after phantoms. she was locked in a room for a half hour of this yeah movie. she calls the cops you say in a room her. but we only see the window behind her and they never pan out for us to see that whole That's room it's just her standing in front of a window this whole time it kind of looks like the hellraiser like clapboard or not clapboards but you know like the uh, uh plaster you know, the, the light shines through yeah them, yeah and the, the slatted uh right yeah she's in an attic or so she gets trapped or that wasn't even the room but she gets trapped she calls yeah. the cops the cops show up and then they can't see her lance mm-hmm. hendrickson's like oh, i like to throw parties and there's nothing going on here and we're like what the fuck is going on yep. here getting more and more lost by the minute yep yeah and then finally jake figures it out yep uh, and we're gonna spoil the fuck out of this movie so if you want to <laughs> see it, you should go uh stop now okay here we go lance hendrickson is adam's dad yeah the dead kid the dead kid the self-immolator okay he's dead Okay. Yep. And that explains what exactly. He's on a revenge quest. I was my first thought, right? Against the kids for. That he, because they got him hooked on that game, Colin. Those motherfuckers. Because this is a. Gotta a, kill them all. It's an allegory for drugs, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A poor one, but yes. A poor yeah. One, yeah. It's only only because I said so. Yeah. That's it. Yep. I mean, but yeah, but I, uh, yeah, and then I was like, was the f- original thing a drug thing? Or I, I'm thinking that it always was a video game deal. Yeah. I'm yeah, wondering probably. if the sh- if the book or whatever short story this is based on is like is an actual you die in the game you die for real type story and then that they, they just kind cut. of yeah they're how like I, we can't afford you do that. all this in like three rooms yep. cut out all technology yep <laughs> gone yep. we can't afford to actually can't, make it yeah, I know right. we said it was a video game we're not going to show it sorry <laughs> yep. can't afford to it's a house now well, maybe not then maybe it was like some kind of uh, like a drug thing in the original uh, like I assume it was yeah. a treatment I think it, no you know, I still think that. I think the movie is exactly the same. You only have to substitute um, in the places where Pinhead kills someone, there would have been a killer we don't see. This way we still get the reveal that it's Lance Henriksen at the end. Yeah, it would have been more like a straight slasher. Right, yeah. but with the kill mm-hmm. scenes, instead of hiding your killer, they just show Pinhead mm-hmm. and we go from there. Right, And you change a few other things around it, but right. it's still the same movie. He... Um, uh, lured them all there because the kid died from something else mm-hmm. um, and he drugs them all and he does the exact same thing to him that he does in this movie. Script, I don't think would have had to change too much to get Pinhead in this. Okay, but uh, but maybe like the supernatural stuff. Well, yeah. That's, right. the, that's why they that, play that graft doesn't like take, Yeah, you know, because it's like this doesn't feel like this fits <laughs> yeah. right. or whatever. Um, so he drugged them all in this scene that we that we've already seen at the, when he invites them in the library and, you know, is like uh, explaining what's going on. But the kid who doesn't drink, like how did he drug him? He like gave him the box. He and, gave him the Lamont configuration and it poked him and it stabbed with the him. drug. Yep. And then uh, Henry Cavill got a double dose. Yeah, because he touched the tarot card where the ink came off, and then he did a shot. Did he do a shot? Yeah, yeah. yeah so he got them both. Yeah, yeah. So all of them have been exposed to this uh, this substance, the psychoreactive that, drug that uh, Lance Henderson so, eventually. Sean, but what was your favorite way a person absorbed this? The one goth girl. <laughs> what a fucking idiot! She's, because when the, at the beginning of the movie, when they're checking out the house and the office, there's some cool like. Uh, Hellraiser lament stuff sitting around, but she grabs a perfume bottle, an old fashioned one, like she's never seen a this before, and she sprays herself in the fucking face, <laughs> like right in the eye. And, and she's then like, she oh, goes, oh, "Oh, it stings! Oh, it stings!" I'm like, "What? What are we doing here? She couldn't. She could have just done it normal, like, oh, I don't know what this smells like, and sprayed it on her wrists. She got to be a dumbass spray and spray it on her, her face, neck, or something yeah, like that. Oh, she just right in her I face. Did not know how aerosols were. <sighs> she held it like right up eye level, and yeah, just she's like, huh. <laughs> So apparently, 
we are told right the, the entire it's very movie, long this is this is lance henriksen's um exposition oh jesus it's the whole third it's, act it, 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 it basically it is long because <laughs> he has to explain who he is what his motivation is how he did this what the drug is and how it yes. works and all this stuff all while taunting them because what happened we learn is the whole movie is not actually didn't actually happen yeah what happened was they showed up he dosed them. They went unconscious. He buried them in graves out in the backyard. So they could have their hallucinations in mm-hmm. shallow graves mm-hmm. with pipes sticking up so they could breathe. Yep. Which we see that shot yes. throughout the movie. And we're like, what in the fuck is that? Them right. screaming at the bottom right. of what we're of a you know, a mm-hmm. circular frame. And it's, we're like, right. it's literally the only editing part of this. I'm just like, good job. Yeah. That makes sense. It, it, now that yeah. I've seen it the whole movie, I'm just like, wow. Right. Okay. It feels like I mean, but it's an element. That, <laughs> it's something. It's something. But it's, it's not that it um, that it I care for to like make sense with the rest of the movie. But it is a thing where they'll like they'll insert this shot later, and then you'll figure it out later. Which I think it kind of worked. Worked in a, like whatever worked mm-hmm. means for this movie. Yeah. So that stuff didn't. The movie didn't happen, but the party is real because the party is back, real. Yeah, so we're supposed to believe, right? That, He's doing this in the middle of a party. And then I went back to the party and enjoyed because myself why not because enjoy it? actual line in this movie. Yeah. Why not enjoy it? Uh, well, him enjoying it is just smoking a cigarette, hanging yep. over the railing, yep. watching yep. everybody, uh, uh, party. Yep. Cause he likes to party. We've all yep. established that. Although did we, because it, did that actually happen? I don't know because now it calls into question everything that you've seen. So in their minds, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. these characters interacted with themselves at a party and saw phantom things and got killed. Got phantom blowjobs. Got phantom blowjobs because apparently Lance Hendricks tells, uh, Hendrickson tells us later, <laughs> it's like, well, you were in there. You had you experienced fear, terror. Orgasms. Why is the box sticking? I don't want to be here anymore. Get me out of the box. So his method was he left Nokia cell phones in each one yep. of the coffins so yep. that they could talk to each other. And he, the master puppet master, mm-hmm. would uh, give them, uh, you know, suggestions. And that would create this scenario, which apparently he is somehow able to see what they envisioned. I think he's hearing. No, I think he just told, I think he prompted them. So like with the girl that got the saw device to the neck, you know, he says she's like scratched her throat out because she thought she was being choked by him. When we see that scene of her getting the saw device to the neck, he's explaining to her how it works and how it's going to happen. I think he just said that exact thing to her over the phone. Uh, in the yes. And then her so mind went to work. So he planted the seed, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then he would like probably listen to the whole thing because he's, I'm guessing he's getting enjoyment out of this yep. since they all killed He's having orgasms too, I'm sure. Uh, maybe. Oh, <laughs> like right down the tube. Oh, 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 oh. You know, Sean, you know it's true. Oh, I know nothing. You can't make me know it. So like Hannibal Lecter, he literally talks these kids to death. Yep. Yep. At least three of them. But- he talks them to death. <laughs> but the but Henry Cavill's is the stupid stupidest one. He says he literally just died of fear. So <laughs> like, like, dude, you were gonna blow job. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> what did you die of? Right. What are you so scared of? He died of the fear of getting a hook in his back. I guess. Or, I oh, guess. I don't know what the, I guess. Because he saw not the chatterer. He saw um the the, the son of the, 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 yeah, yeah, the blindfolded one. Yeah, yeah. The black like electrical tape wrapped around his head. Yeah. Um. The Cenobites, they do show up in this movie, but they're just kind of people wandering through the frame. There's no yeah. like uh, aura of menace, really. No atmosphere. No. When you go back and look at how the first Hellraiser was photographed, there was always like wind Fog and, yeah. rain, and and their voices sounded different. This they're, is just like some dude on the set. They're yeah. not even like good music cues when they show up or anything. It's pretty silent when they show up yeah. most of the time. Like at least give them like a like sting a, or something. Oh, yeah. Something. Create a, some atmosphere. an atmosphere. Yeah. Put a little fog in there. Right. Yeah. But nothing. We get mm-hmm. nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Uh, we get wisps of Rob Zombie's music. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. For this oh, and we have music that sounds like Hellraiser, but yeah. right. actually <laughs> but it's yeah. not. Hellraiser sounds like a little music box mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, so somehow, though, right, because mm-hmm. I, I think the impression is that he leaves them all there and uh, then he takes off and he leaves them to die somehow in these boxes, uh, even though they can breathe. But they'll starve to death eventually. They'll starve, to death. starve to death or, you know, maul themselves to mm-hmm. death or just have heart attacks. Mm-hmm. But they are found mm-hmm. by yes. the Romanian police. I mean, the, the New York <laughs> police. 
Yes. Uh, because they were able to track a cell phone call back to this address. You've been missing for three days, they were told. And uh, they dig them up. Because a ghost yep. called the police. Colin. Sure. Why not? Who? who what? Who? Adam. Oh. Because we see him in the window and then he disappears. Oh, that's I think. true. I'm pretty sure that's him. Yeah. But that's he, true. They're like, so who made the call? Yeah. A fucking ghost. So mm-hmm. this is uh, Adam forgives them. Mm-hmm. Right. And so Chelsea and Jake are still alive. Thank God. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we no, we cannot uh, go the, farther. Yeah, yeah, the roundhouse. Yes. Oh my God. We I cannot go that. farther until we get to this. <laughs> so Jake and this Chelsea. This is back in the, in the fake uh, dream world. Right. In the fake world. dream world house yeah. when they're both Jake and Chelsea, the only ones left. Nobody else is in the house. They're trying to find each other. They do eventually meet up and they're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. And so they're running around stairs. And then Lance Henderson stops to be like, no, no, you're mine. And she's like, you think so? asshole and then she fucking roundhouse kicks lance hendrickson <laughs> off a balcony off a balcony i can't tell you how out of nowhere this is we were we all audibly reacted to that the that best was- moment of the movie because it actually surprised us yeah, yeah it was bizarre bizarre yeah. but hilarious because yeah. uh, bob weinstein saw like the matrix the night before yeah. or when something did, no when did kill bill come out like 2003, right? Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Is, uh, this yeah. feels like well, I got a blonde in here. Like, he wanted a Kill Bill moment. I, th- yeah. I feel like that's mm-hmm. what he wanted out of this. Well, it also had one of those scenes where, like, uh, the the heroine gets on the, you know, it was like a scream moment where, like, the killer calls. Because I remember Sydney doing this. The killer calls, and then the heroine kind of, like, you know, it's like, you're not such hot shit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what yeah. do you think, you're pinhead? You're not. I'm like, is she scared? You know, from where she is, or is, like, what the fuck's going on? So right, now she's challenging the guy who's trying to kill her. <laughs> yeah, it turns right. into like now where I'm going to confront you on the phone type shit. Like the the character reactions are not consistent from scene to scene. Yeah, that's they're, the they're, yeah, they're, that's they're, the they're, issue. Whatever their emotional state should right. be, it's not whatsoever. Yeah. So they are not. They don't have the ability to carry that from scene to scene. Also, the director probably doesn't. Somebody's not telling them. All right, you're this in this scene. Continue on. Right. Which is a big problem for this yeah, movie. Yeah, because then you go, like, either the director didn't have, like, you know, couldn't see the movie in yep. his head, yep. uh, didn't care, or yep. was getting, you know, nightly updates from Bob Weinstein. Right. We, <laughs> uh, we need roundhouse kicks. We need at least two roundhouse kicks yeah. in this movie. It's like Scream. One. This really worked really well in Scream. We want we to do this again. You know, yeah. uh, they turn the tables on the killer. Um, uh. But then... Like Lance Henriksen keeps popping up. Like there's this big moment that she kicks him over the railing and you're yeah. like, oh, that's the big bravura <laughs> moment. And then they run down the stairs and he's there and they go outside right. and he's there. And then he reveals Ha-ha. they've been in a box this whole time. They do get found. They and then we're like, undone. oh, thank God this is over. Woo! But nope, Thank no. God there's not two more endings. <laughs> oh. So ending number two. Uh, Lance Henriksen is later found. Well, no, we find him. In uh, cliche, the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sitting in front of 86. a window, drinking a bottle of vodka. Drinking a bottle of vodka and smoking because he's depressed. In a Looking dingy hotel room. Yep. Picture. Yep. yep. But Contemplating he, suicide, probably. Yep. But he has the the Hellraiser box, the mm-hmm. Lament configuration. Lament. 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 Sorry. Yeah. 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 In this movie. And uh, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. Tears. It's a lament. Thing. Yep. I get it. Uh, so but this is the off-brain movie, so lament. it's the off-brain uh, yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. It's this, Lamar this, you know what? This movie deserves a Lamont configuration. <laughs> yeah. um, so he solves the puzzle, and we get a Hellraiser scene, which is like, <laughs> finally! <laughs> All right, then Pinhead and the Cenobites show up in the corner. They're like, you're going to hell. He's like, no, this isn't real. And they're like, yes, it is. And then they cut him in half. In thirds. Times. Yeah. In thirds. Yeah. A couple times. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he's woohoo. Mm-hmm. And really bad CGI on his body. Yeah. yeah. Your suffering shall be legendary. Mm-hmm. Even in hell. I mean, what, it's like he, oh. he doesn't say that, but like, doesn't. it's a version of that because right. like, that's what he does. Uh, but <laughs> nope. seeing them in the corner of his shitty ho- motel room, because it's a motel, let's be real, it's a motel. Mm. Uh, it's so funny to me. Like they just, <laughs> they just, they look even cheaper and worse. Yeah. Like in this, right? Setting. Because again, like, they're yeah. not. There's no good. There's no fog. Lighting. There's nothing. There's no yeah. fog. There's nothing. They're just like, hello. Yeah, we're here <laughs> to, kill to kill you, you now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And there's st- don't aren't they by the door? Yeah. So it's like, like they walked in. You're the like they walked in. And yeah. Then, oh. it, it looks like they like you would just imagine them walking down the hallway trying to find the right room. <laughs> <laughs> just trying cards. Yep. 
fuck. Nope. Your no. suffering is about to begin. Mm-hmm. He Shit. says that like three or four times. Yeah. So it's like, oh no, I thought we were almost done with this movie. Uh, but, and Sean uh, says, I've been suffering for an hour and 20 minutes already. <laughs> I've been suffering. Please end me. <laughs> well, Lance Henderson's dead, so the movie's over. Yeah. No, it's no. not over yet. The, now our two uh, remaining characters are best friends on a road trip somewhere. Mm-hmm. Either to Chicago or Florida. And oh, wait, why is it those two places? I don't know. <laughs> there's, uh, I like there's two the way, different directions. Yeah. yeah like. and, and and he's like, let's go to, you know, like Panama Beach or whatever, you know, Miami Beach. And she's like, oh, that's such a guy thing to say. I'm like, such what the fuck? Does everybody like want to go? No, yeah. the writing <laughs> is absolute horseshit. She chooses Chicago? Like, right. what the fuck? Okay. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Lance Henderson appears in the back seat and freaks him out. And we're like, wait a second. What are the fucking rules of this movie? <laughs> and then he reaches up and grabs the steering wheel and they do a little spin out. But then he's not there. And we're like, uh, okay. And then what was that cut in between? Um, the uh, cops are finding something. There was something we were cutting between. This whole scene. Oh my God. The cops, it was the cops coming into the hotel room. Oh, and oh, finding, and right. finding, finding it was blood. just like painted. The room was just like painted in blood, which is not what we saw. No, he got, I mean, like I said, did they break him apart more? Yeah. I think afterwards. And his body's gone, and, but the Lamont configuration is there. True. Dun, dun, dun. You know yeah. what that means? Sequel. That means, uh, yes, sequel. you can have Hellraiser Revelations or Hellraiser, what are the other two called? Debtor is one of Those them. Those are before this, though. Before? I don't know. Oh, so Debtor came before yeah. this? Yeah. That was the other one that yeah. was shot back to. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, where Revelations are we? Is I know one. this is the. So, there are 10 movies in the series, but we're not done. Because, <laughs> uh, so I think Nick and Tosca is writing or has written, I think, no, it's coming to Hulu, mm-hmm. Hellraiser. The Reek were boot. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. no. It's getting this the legacy sequel I don't treatment. Know. They uh, haven't really said. It's like, it, the, no, but that's there's what a new Hellraiser. Be. I know Clive Barker had written one at one point, yeah. and uh, I think Patrick Lussier and Todd Farmer had done one, and uh, none of them got greenlit, and so now we get the Nick Antosca version. It, I think that's Patrick Farmer and Lussier's, like, that's their second career is pitching movies that will for franchise yeah, no that kidding. will never get made. Yeah, Halloween 3D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they it's put like, it he puts them on his blog, you know, it's like, right. well, this one didn't get made, so right. here's the right. whole so story. Here's what yeah. it was. Yep. <laughs> and 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 not done yet because <laughs> there's also that guy who is just setting out to fucking destroy every goddamn horror movie franchise that we hold dear. David Gordon Green. No, 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 no. Is no. directing, I think, a couple episodes of Hellraiser the TV show. Which is coming soon. Is that going to uh, be on Shutter? The Shutter sounds like something they, they know. would do. Oh, it could be not. AMC for all we know, or, yeah. or Hulu. No, but don't do it. We got more. more I'm sure somebody will watch it, and if you like it, God bless you. But <laughs> never. No. Maybe we aren't Hellraiser people. I well, I you think know, that's the thing. Maybe this I don't, just isn't. I'm for not us. a Hellraiser person. I know. So I'm not, this movie, yeah. these I movies really are, like that I, the, first. The one. first yeah. one. I, yeah. The first one's good. I even like the second one too. Mm-hmm. Um, the third one is I, that something. one's probably from the third one is from my childhood. So I've seen it a lot. So with, like the memories. If I think of uh, Hellraiser, that's the one that keeps popping up in my head. Oof. I know. I'm sorry. It's not okay. great. Well, they're all that's walking down the street and they destroy yeah, everything. Yeah, that's that terrible. I know. That, it's not great. Yeah, it destroys but, the, myst- the mystique so, of the characters. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, I like one and two, but I wouldn't I wouldn't venture past. No. And the unless, again, two, unless somebody forces me to do it, I, will, I, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that brings us to tonight. So I guess <laughs> it may not be a secret, but you might want to hear what we have to say about this movie and whether we would recommend that you watch it. But before we do that, listener, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Igor, what do you think about this movie? <laughs> He's asleep. He ran me. away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. He's like, I can't stick around for this. <laughs> Igor, get out of your box in your shallow grave. <laughs> yes. Get up here and tell us what you think. Uh, well, we should let you good folks at home know how you can uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, 
Okay, so we may have put Gary Tunnicliffe, right, the uh, uh, the mm -hmm. uh, makeup effects guy for this movie, on the hallway okay. of fame. He because he was the dead Londoner in Dracula 2000. He was <laughs> the officer in Halloween Resurrection, and he was the bound Cenobite in oh. Hellraiser Hell World. Wow. Okay. Like the police officer at the beginning of Resurrection? I don't know. Uh, Interesting. He was in Scary Movie as well. There you go. And did a lot of makeup effects work. Uh, Interesting. It sounds like for mostly uh, Dimension Films movies. In Romania, yeah. <laughs> but we're also adding, it's only taken us 10 years, but Doug Bradley himself oh. has been added to the Saturday oh, Night damn. Freak Show Wall of Fame because he was in Hellraiser Hell World. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He was in Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth, which uh -huh. we did. And he was in Nightbreed, uh, which oh. we also did. So well, we got him on there I'm for sorry, a this is how it had to happen. Yeah, well, <laughs> your certificate is in the mail, sir, and your photo is going up on the wall. Mm -hmm. We're going to frame it and... And look at it. Yep. Pound it and in admire the it. mail. And, yep. <laughs> uh, so thank you, uh, MF Mad. Thank you. Uh, okay, so about tonight's movie, Hellraiser Hell World G-Money writes oh. in well, and you, says uh this has the 2000 stank all over it oh yeah another film that i'm not sure if it would be better or worse without forcing it in the hellraiser property these sequels just have that dimension look to them like mm. the mimic and children of the corn movies yep. it's got it's good for background noise and not much else mm. <clears throat> yeah she was rocking that leather duster that's right. When's yeah. that look coming back? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't think so, Colin. I mean, I think they're saving <laughs> that for vampire movies. And yeah. Crow reboot on the That'll way. bring oh, it back. Course, if Bill Skarsgård's wearing one, it'll come back for yeah, sure. Yeah. Will they even do that look now? Or maybe not? I don't not. know. What did they call the... What did we call the... We have a name for the early 2000s stank. Is it the ooze or the fuzz? I think it was ooze. I think it's the 2000s. No. It was something. We had a we had one for it. We had yeah. staked out. I thought 90s. The, the 90s ooze and the 2000s fuzz. <laughs> I don't like remember. Oh. <laughs> we need to start cataloging these. Uh, Novato Judoka writes in and says, Oh, damn. I watch along, then I must. Or as I watch along, then I must. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, I feel sorry for all the people who <laughs> play the game at home. I know, Michaela. Think about the exactly. poor folks at home. home. Game. It's not just us that we're your. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Yo, know, Jimbo Ice says, I've seen a lot of Hellraiser movies over the years, and this was certainly one of them. It, it is, <laughs> I mean, it, it is it, a it says Hellraiser movie. Title. You are right. Yep. I cannot disagree with that. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called The Cell, and Joey Blythe writes in and says, I'll have to rewatch this since I haven't seen it since I was 19. I only remember the horse. How could anyone forget the horse? <laughs> That's the horse. very memorable. Uh, true, true. The week before that, we watched a movie called May. Mm. And oh three oh three oh thirty two says no one can play the weird, cute, quirky girl like Angela Bettis. Correct. Agreed. Uh, action dude says dolls are always creepy unless they're action figures and they're golly gee super duper <laughs> oozing with cool, especially when you blow up your cousin's action figures with firecrackers. Hey, it beats running with scissors, so don't judge the eleven year old me. I, I like mean, to imagine Action Dude is just a sentient action figure. <laughs> <laughs> right? He is no, he is like a Duke Kaboom from Toy Story. He, he's yeah, like, yeah. Reads, Duke Kaboom. yeah, he's That's Action Dude, dude yeah. So it makes sense that you would uh blow up action figures. And I won't judge you because I would do it now. I know. Right? Yeah, it sounds yeah. fun. That's yeah, fun. Maybe we should do that figures. this summer. Colin, yeah. we could should do Ooh, that. Yeah, let's get some big action yeah. figures and yeah, yeah I'll find up. some of my old sons yeah, like big it. Titan <laughs> superheroes and we yeah. can blow them up with <laughs> firecrackers. <laughs> no fun can we, can we like loosen the joints a little bit though so they really explode? Oh, we we gotta film it in slow mo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a YouTube channel and this whole thing. Let's do this. We already have a YouTube channel. Freak show fire. There you go. Okay. Uh Travis Legler writes in and says, You guys mentioned Red, the movie Red with Brian. Brian Cox. Yes. It was directed by Lucky McKee, who did mm -hmm. May. Yes. Uh, I just bought that movie after seeing a clip on Facebook. It's very interesting, well acted, and worth a watch, but a word of caution, it's going to tug at the heartstrings watching a dog being murdered. Oh, I struggle to watch yikes. Turner and Hooch, Old Yeller, and even that small part in Mice of Men, of Mice and Men, where the pup dies. Yeah. Good movie, yeah. but sad. Yeah. Yeah, I still have a hard time watching Turner and Hooch. Mm hmm. Red is a good movie, though. I'll, is I'll it? vouch I for that now. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm interested. Uh, Grant Parrish says, I was going to watch May last night, but recalled the murdered cat thing, and my cat had been missing for two days. Aww. He showed up at 5.30 this morning, soaking wet and hungry. Guess who isn't that keen on going outside today? <laughs> <laughs> Grab that cat, hold yeah. it tight, and watch May. All right. So I guess, who is going to watch a weird cat murder movie today? It's me. I'm surprised yes. you didn't get it. The parts <laughs> are all there. Uh, Joey Blythe uh, says, oh, writing in again. There you go. Uh, he says that uh, about May, 
It's a cult classic movie. He says, I have three movies that I that lean more on the cult classic but not sci-fi horror side that I wish more people knew about. Number one is Tape, starring Ethan Hawke, Robert Sean Leonard, and Uma Thurman. Number two is Judgment Night from 1993. And number three is Stay from 2005. That's uh, Naomi Watts and... Ooh. Is that that one? Ewan McGregor. Am I thinking of the right? I haven't heard of any I think of I saw these. it. And I he says, of- uh, I believe Rotten Tomatoes says stay is at a 27% score where the audience is 70. So there's something wrong with that score. Uh, yeah. Judgment Night, I think, is That's on That's Emilio list. Estevez and I'm Cuba Gooding Jr. Out. Dennis Leary. That one is not too bad. What's the first one you mentioned? Uh, first one was Tape. I have tape. not heard of that one. Yeah, I've not heard of that, but with I'm Ethan interested. Hawk tape and with Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke makes interesting choices. He does. Career-wise. I always appreciate him. He does indeed. He takes some risks. He does some weird genre he d- stuff. He d- yeah, he does like big movies. He does small movies. He's- he has weird roles sometimes, like his role in uh, Valerian was very yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. And now he's doing Moon Knight, and I love the press and tour Black that he's Phone. doing about it because he's like, I don't know what the hell this is, but <laughs> the, the people are watching these movies, and I like yeah. movies, and I like people watching me in movies. Yeah. Uh, Bl- Black Phone <laughs> coming out in June. Coming soon, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, Brett Williams writes in and says, with two Frankenstein type films in a row, because we also did, we did. Uh, Andy Warhol's uh, Frankenstein, Flesh for Frankenstein, he says, uh, I should probably do a science report on where Mary Shelley got the idea that dead tissue could be reanimated. Sean, we're going to need the uh, science reporter, Brett Williams. <laughs> uh, writes in with a dispatch from the uh, uh, science and says, <laughs> From the science. It starts with. Guys, I've come straight from the science. <laughs> Well, he says it starts with Luigi Galvini in the oh. 1780s, discovering freshly dissected frog legs, which will twitch when a metal instrument touches the sciatic, sciatic nerve, mm-hmm. releasing an ionic charge. The idea that galvanism was a way of potentially restoring life became a popular opinion, which influenced Mary Shelley's writing. And although mentioned in the novel, it wasn't until Universal made a movie that the electrical reanimation of a corpse we know today was finally realized. See, this is the kind of shit I want in my science corner. There you go. Oh, Thank I should you. also uh, say uh, Grant Parrish also like took notes during uh, the his screening of yeah. May, which you can they were read. very entertaining. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. I was laughing pretty hard, and I had a, a lot of this, list there. I had a lot of the same thoughts though when I was watching <laughs> as well. Well, thank you very much, each one of you, for uh, writing in. Uh, Tony Bradshaw, I'm sorry, uh, you're posting stuff to our Facebook page, and I can't see it for some reason. Oh. It just tells me that it's there, but I can't. I don't know what the hell. It's, a, oh. it's probably because yeah, the Zuck is watching you after posting oh, that picture know. from Flesh for Frankenstein. Kind of yeah, like, I know. You're I'm on a watch, watch list, list now, yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Shouldn't yep. have done it. Breaking the law. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> and so now. Colin. Yeah, Sean. What did you think about tonight's movie? Hellraiser, Hellraiser, Hellraiser Hell World. Um, I'm lost if we get to the end of this. I'm like, what did we watch? <laughs> uh, we watch a lot of bad movies on this show. True. Uh, True because thing. we get a lot of enjoyment, I think, out of watching <laughs> bad movies. Um, but I, I'm like, I mean, most of the stuff, there are times that, yeah, we're bringing movies to like, yeah, look at this. This is so fucking horrible <laughs> that you're going to. I don't hold any of this against you, Michaela. I know that we went into this blind, uh, but this yes, is just uh, it's a soulless movie. And I think, uh, you know, that's what makes these type of movies, uh, the direct to video direct so fucking hard to sit through. I mean, they're awful. They're There's nothing they, really they, they to get out of feel them. feel bad. Like, they give me a, a feeling or just like, ugh. Yeah, because it feels like, um, well, I mean, I suppose in some ways it does feel like you're being taken advantage of. You know, it's like, I'm aware that the people who made this, like, don't care at all about mm. any of it. I mean, I'm, guy's going to, Rick Boda is going to write into us. Please do. He's going to yeah. say, like, no, I actually did, like, think, I, Mr. Okay, Boda, I don't believe if you it. have thoughts, <laughs> expressions, if you want to break down your process, please. He as long as Larry given, Block doesn't come with you. An assignment and a time frame and a budget yep. and a list of people who are going to be in it is like execute the come up with a plan and execute it under these circumstances. And so he did it. Okay. So should we hold him accountable for that? I mean, ultimately, I'm saying that's his involvement in the movie. Yeah. Right. It, you feel it. You know, it's just, it's a movie that's made by a corporation trying to uh, exploit your interest in an iconic property. Yes. Um, I mean, it, it is. You know, there's nothing there except it, at some point down the road, it'll keep paying dividends because the kids love this, uh, you know, Hellraiser stuff and they yeah. will just keep watching it we, forever. Horror, horror fans are rabid. Like, we, mm-hmm. they're a different breed when but it comes to this. Stuff. Are they? Because there's the all the, the American pies and the bring it on. Uh, I know? think there's a. 
I think those same people venture out into other uh, genres, but I, I think you find more of those characteristics in the horror community. Yeah, that's why I, w- I went into this going like I'm going to make the argument that the, the horror community always falls victim to this shit. But you know, maybe you know, as you said, there are other. Uh, there are, but we. But we really do. like we love our toys, and we're never going to give them up, and we love our characters, and we're never going to give them up, and you know, even when you. The people making them don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep watching it. Yeah. And so we watched Hellraiser Hell World. <laughs> Number eight. I yeah, still want to keep. Eight. I still want to make sure everyone knows that this is the eighth movie in this series. <sighs> uh, no, run, run far away. It That's, just it sucks more than anything's ever sucked before. It's one of the worst movies we've ever watched. Uh, Sean, what do you think? <laughs> uh, better or worse than um, Would You Rather? Because that's what worse. This, the, the, wor- okay, worse. good. I agree. This is worse. <laughs> um, yeah, like you said, like for all the reasons you said, it feels um, it feels like a cynical movie to me. Uh, I mean, sometimes I'm a cynical guy, but it f- yeah, it feels like I said. It just movies like this they make me feel bad. I don't want to spend time with movies like this. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's something you can get out of it if you are oh, maybe a hardcore Hellraiser fan. If there's a uh, dear Brailler, if you, you know, any of what you out the, there are what, hardcore what Hellraiser, do you get fan, out of it. Pinheads in it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm saying. I'm not. Colin, saying- we've watched every Halloween movie they've ever put out. Like you said, we'll get, like I'm. I'm sure people feel the same way about Hellraiser. You know, like right. There this, are. Well, there, this is what I'm it's saying. It's not us, but right. there are people that are like that. I'm sure. I'm, there's. I'm. I'm I, there's guys. There, I feel the way I do about you know Halloween and Scream. Mm-hmm. Just because they are. Some of them are technically. Uh, I would call them technically better series than Hellraiser altogether, but that's just me. But there's going to be somebody out there who loves this shit and will go see it. Um, oh, is this uh, not for me. I'm not a Hellraiser person, as we discussed earlier, but movies like this don't help. Uh, yeah, it's a bad movie. It's uh, boilerplate dialogue. It's the it's every cliche you ever thought of. They're taking everything from every movie that's happened over the past like five years and putting elements of that into it, like we said, because Bob calls in the middle of the night and says, we need this to compete with everybody else. And it fucking sucks. And I don't like this movie. I'm angry that I watched it. I'm glad that it's over and maybe never come back to it again. <laughs> uh, Michaela, but it's a big, big pass. Uh, I even uh, uh, I even say for Holly pass like because i i know she would so i'm gonna say pass for holly as well so it's a double pass over here michaela take us home a uh, question for the group is what franchise is worse hellraiser or texas chainsaw if you do the franchise hellraiser. math hellraiser, hellraiser yeah like, i think so too there's like one great one one okay one and then the rest of them are really pretty bad yeah. but i think i feel the same way about texas chainsaw i think there's one great one one oh one maybe now maybe two okay ones yeah. I don't even like Texas Chainsaw 2. I don't even like that one. Yeah, but like, it has moments that are better than anything in this movie. No, I, yeah. I know we were saying no, we, I would we rather passed watch, on that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I would rather watch the Texas Chainsaw movies. But like yeah. I said, that's because I'm not a Hellraiser person. But I think, like I said, if you do the math of how many good movies versus bad movies, I think these two are neck and neck franchise wise. Like... Because there's not there's not very many Texas chainsaws I yeah, like either. I, like, I you guess know? I like more of them, I suppose. Than, than I don't think do. I do. I like, think it's the same. I'll, I mean, I, I mean, I would rather watch a Texas chainsaw. Yeah. Right. I know. I get. That's Unless what I'm, I agree. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying if you sit down and look at the whole list of all the franchises and say that's a good movie, that's a bad movie for both franchises. I think it's the same I, number of good actually, and bad. You know, what? I would I agree. Get, I think yeah. they're I get, very right there. Yeah. I got the the comparison for this is the Howling movie series. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have not seen like, any of the like Hellraiser to Howling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen one. Yeah, yeah, I've seen one Howling movie ever. So yeah, there's it, one good one. Yeah. And there's like eight bad. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this, I mean, I, I feel misled. There was no video game <laughs> yeah, in this movie. Yeah, I want a fucking video game in this movie. Yeah, and, and like, like you said, Sean, the tagline even says, like, it, hell goes online or whatever. Like, the poster has, like, binary code on it. Like, Yeah, it, it's like the fucking yeah, Matrix meets yeah, Hellraiser. I'm yeah. like, this is, it's not that movie. Yeah, Halloween Resurrection was closer yeah. in what it was doing than this Danger movie Dangertainment had Dangertainment. more of a point than this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Like it makes Halloween Resurrection look pretty good in comparison. Like, I'll take Buster Rhymes. Yeah, I know Colin will. That movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least that movie had a clear vision and knew what it was doing. <laughs> and did, it, yeah, you know. And this movie, like, it just doesn't make sense while you're watching it. And the more they reveal, the more it continues to not make sense. And it creates so many plot holes, but they don't even care to try and cover them up. They think saying that you were like 
imagining it all covers everything, but it doesn't. And it's not even a good time capsule movie because there is some 2000s stank on it, but like. It'd be a better time capsule if it actually had soundtrack. Yeah, but it, yeah, and like we said, it would have the Valentine soundtrack if it did have one. But like, it doesn't even have that many time capsule elements because it's so low budget. Mm. There's like not a lot of things being brought into this, you know, the a little bit of fashion, the Nokia cell phone, but that's like it. Like, whereas if this was a bigger budget, it would be an even better time capsule. So like, it's not even worth it for the time capsule effect. No. Uh, I mean, if you really are like a Henry Cavill completionist or a Doug Bradley completionist or something, I guess. Yeah. If you want to see Henry Cavill in a Hellraiser movie and just like, and that's yeah. why I think you go in to people. You're oh just yeah. Like, Henry Cavill. That's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah. But that's like, oh, really? I'm like, he's really, he's 21 years old in this movie. He's young. Like, yeah, it's so it's this, it's it's weird to just be like, wow, that guy grows up to be like one of the biggest movie stars (laughs) in the world. Yeah, like, (laughs) yeah, it is. So like, that is interesting, but it's not enough to watch it. And he's bad in this movie, I think. But I also think he's not being given anything to work with either. So you got to look at the whole movie and be like, well. Right. So, yeah, you know, it's a pass. It's a bad movie. I didn't bring it because I thought it was going to be good. I brought <laughs> it because God. Henry Cavill was in a video game Hellraiser movie that was Doug Bradley's <laughs> last performance. Like, if I told you guys that, you would all be like, oh, we should probably watch that it's at like, some point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nothing, you know? it's just, there's an interest there. Yeah. Yeah. Going to have some virtual reality, maybe. And that would like, be cool. Uh, virtual oh, reality, I hell guess. world. They'd be straight yeah. Colin, with the. Stop talking, all right? But, You're making me want that, and I don't want this anymore. <laughs> I'm done with this. But I this, seriously thought that was what I, this I was hoping. Yeah. This movie should be inspiring to you all, though. If you have a dream and a ticket to Romania, you can make a movie with Henry Cavill. <laughs> that, that, so, that is the silver line to any of these. It's just like, well, if they allow that to go out, yeah, you can make anything. Yeah, so take take that away from this. That yeah. follow your dreams. Bigger make the idiots you want. than you have made movies. <laughs> yeah, you can do it too. Have made movies with someone that would go on to be a gigantic A list star. So you know what? Follow your dreams, guys. <laughs> but like but follow your dreams, but don't watch this movie. So. Yeah. Pass. That was very inspirational. Yeah. Thanks for turning yeah. that around for us. Yeah. Right. Changes your whole perspective on this movie. Doesn't it? <laughs> Part eight of Hellraiser. Yeah. Oof. All right. All right. Uh, so next week, well, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, what are we going to watch next week if you say Hellraiser Deader? Yeah, if you. <laughs> I was if curious. you say Howling 8, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> it's Howling 7 is the one okay. you actually want to... Full Moon Rising or whatever. Oh, wow. And we're not watching that. Okay. Okay, so uh, we watched May, and in May, Jeremy Sisto was a big Dario Argento fan, and at one point, I remember as we were watching it, that we went pa- in his room, went past a poster of opera. Not one of you guys seemed to recognize it, so we're going to watch opera All right. <laughs> next week okay. on the Saturday Night Free I have Show. not seen right. opera. Yeah, I All don't right. think I've ever seen it either. I think this might be the last of the Dario Argento movies I bring because it feels like we've shit. done it. This is like Bull the last shit. good one. Shit. All right. This Inferno <laughs> still out there. Yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't. I don't know. Well, yeah. if I get those, we'll give it a couple right, years. No, 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 you can't. I'm it's a, been two years since the last one. You can't so say yeah. this is the last Argento movie I'm going to bring to the yeah. freak show. No, nah, okay. I don't believe you whatsoever. All right, so that's like next I'm week. never going to bring a scream again or a Halloween. Come <laughs> on, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I will not bring anymore. I promise. Oh, thank you. Oh, all oh, right, all right. Uh, you can put that out on air.